If token associations are making you pull your hair out, this video is for you. Stay to the end and I'll show you how to create and cancel token airdrops. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to leverage Hedera's frictionless airdrop feature. This means you can send tokens to any account on Hedera without the recipient needing to associate it. And also everything's gonna be inside of Solidity. Let's first go through the whole flow and then we can have a deep dive into the code. So I've already deployed the smart contract and upon deploying it, I also created a native fungible token. So this smart contract is the treasury of a particular token. Uh, therefore we can airdrop it from, from here. So inside of this airdrop function argument, we've got a array of uh, addresses and each of these addresses, one of them, they're slightly different in the sense that one of the addresses, one of the accounts has unlimited auto associations, whereas the other account has no auto associations. And the result of this airdrop is going to be slightly different for each one. So we're going to have a look at actually at what those differences are. We're going to send each of them, let's send each of them five. So we'll transact, sign the transaction. And we can then have a look at the block explorer as to what actually happens there we go so if we view that on the block explorer as you can see it's a ethereum transaction and it's got a child token airdrop transaction but interestingly in this token transfer list it only has one of the transactions when we actually wanted it to go to two now that's explained by the unlimited versus no auto association so in the instance of the unlimited auto association auto associations as we can see there has been five received that's because there's not an element of r ah, that account needs to associate whereas with this particular account if we have a look over here it has no auto associations therefore it's not come in immediately but what has happened is it's been added to that pending airdrops list so from this perspective this user in his wallet, he'd be able to accept the pending airdrop. That's slightly out of scope of this video. We can do other videos covering that. Definitely drop it in the comments if you'd like to see how to do that. But as you can see in this pending airdrops, we now have five of that test token, which has been airdropped on the January 31st today. Um, and yeah, for that reason, um, it's showing off the pending airdrops. Now, let's also show how to cancel the airdrop. So it's not just about uh, airdropping fungible tokens, but you can also cancel them as well. And in the instance over here where the airdrop has been received because either they've already associated it or there's unlimited associations, you can't cancel this airdrop. The airdrop's already occurred. However, when there's a pending airdrop, you can cancel it. So I've got the address of the recipient. We're going to execute this smart contract, uh, this function. And once that's been uh, mined, we can then have a look at that airdrop, pending airdrop list. Once I refresh it, we should hopefully see only two left because that five tokens which we just airdropped has been cancelled now. So there we go. That's just a quick overview as to that functionality. Let's now have a deeper dive into the code. Awesome. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to skip over this constructor. I'm not going to cover that into too much detail, but we are creating a fungible token and then we are uh, setting that fungible token to this FT address inside of the smart contract state. Now, if we have a look at the airdrop fungible token, uh, we can have a look at my implementation of it. This isn't the most gas efficient way because there's quite a lot of looping and we're using arrays and whatnot. Uh, however, I think it's a good way to just understand how we're constructing the relevant data structures which are needed. Great. So as you can see, we're passing in an address array of recipients and an address array uh, and an integer array of cool uh, of amounts, which will be the amount that the given recipient receives. Now, the data structure which this airdrop tokens function coming from the Hedera token service system pre-compiled smart contract, uh, the data structure which that's looking for is this iHedera token service uh, token transfer list. Now, what this token transfer list is, is it contains, th this is actually a list made up of lists. 
where within a token transfer list, you can transfer multiple different types of tokens um, and to multiple different users, multiple receivers, or theoretically multiple senders as well. Before I go into, into too much detail, I think it's worth having a look at the SDK so we can draw some comparisons, which aren't necessarily perfect, but on a high level, they, they do the exact same thing. So as you can see, we've got the token airdrop transaction API up here. And when we're creating these airdrop transactions, it's very similar to when we're creating a transfer transaction, which you're probably more familiar with, where we add token transfers, we specify the token ID and the account ID, and then whether it's being sent <clears throat> or whether it's being received, that denotes whether we use a negative sign or a positive sign. So in this instance, we are saying that this token ID will be sent because it's negative by account ID one, and it will be received by account ID two because they're getting a positive amount. Now to a similar effect, we need to create a same thing with this token transfer list. So what I've created is we're just doing a, uh, we're specifying in this token transfer list struct, we're constructing it with the token, which is the fungible token address. We're also saying that there's going to be an array of transfers in which the length of that array is the length of the recipients plus one. <clears throat> now, the reason why it's plus one is again, remember we need to have the, tre the treasury account also inside of that list because they're gonna be sending the amount. So we've got the recipients, user A, user B, as well as the treasury account, the smart contract, which is then gonna be sending it. Hence we have the length of that list plus another one. For NFT transfers, that's just an empty array. Then what we're doing is we're populating that transfers array. So we're iterating over all of the transfers and we are creating an account amount struct. This account amount struct, what this is doing is it's specifying, okay, what's the account and what's the amount that they're receiving? Very similar over here to the account and the amount. So we're saying the account ID is obviously going to be the recipient. The amount they receive is positive because we're sending it to them. And it's going to be obviously a part of that amount array. And it's not an approval uh, transaction. And we're also accumulating the total transfer. And the reason why that is, uh, we'll see over here. So the final item inside of this uh, transfer token list is going to be the account amount for the treasury account, the smart contract, which is going to be sending that total transfer amount. That's the reason why we've got this negative sign. And of course, if you want to get the address of a smart contract, you use address brackets this. Now, because this airdrop token, uh, this airdrop tokens function, it actually allows you to transfer multiple different types of tokens. So it could be uh, fungible token A, fungible token B, or fungible token A and a non-fungible token. We're keeping it pretty simple and we're just doing one fungible token. But because of that, you can actually then create a array of these structs. Um, we're, but, but for us, we're just doing one. So we're saying, okay, look, this is the, 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 the argument, the, with the variable which we're gonna be passing in as the argument is this token transfer list. And that's obviously this token transfer list array, just gonna have a length of one, and we're going to then be passing that into the airdrop tokens function. And that's all that we need to do. I do appreciate it's maybe a bit more complex if you're uh, relatively new to Solidity, uh, but it's a really good way of understanding structs as well, because there's quite a few different data structures in here, which we've been constructing. Now let's have a look at how we can cancel the airdrop. Now, again, we're going to be using a struct over here. This is going to be a slightly different data structure. And what it's going to be, is going to be essentially the pending airdrop ID. So again, that cancel airdrops, uh, the function coming from the Hedera system smart contract, that takes in a pending airdrop array, meaning you can actually cancel multiple pending airdrops. In our implementation, we've just done one. So we're passing in the recipient as an argument, and we are then creating a pending airdrops array, which only has a length of one. And that pending airdrop array, that's made up of these individual pending airdrop IDs. Now, the way that we get this ID is we create a, a sort of composite key, which includes the sender. Obviously, the sender is a smart contract. The receiver, that's coming from our smart uh, our function argument. 
the token, which is the fungible token address, and the serial. This is specifically for NFTs. We're not worrying about NFTs, so we'll leave it as zero. But it's really important to know that essentially with these three parameters, we actually then have a unique ID, which can be used to specify. Now, you can, so when, when you create airdrops, this is just a bit of a tangent, when you create airdrops, you can uh, send someone, airdrop someone 30, and then airdrop them another 30, and then have a total of 60. When you cancel the airdrop, it will cancel all 60. So as you can see, we've now created this struct. We are then specifying this struct belongs in that zero index of this length one array. And then we're just passing that pending airdrops list into the cancel airdrops function, uh, exactly how it's being asked for by the Hedera precompile. And there we have it. That's how you cancel the airdrop as well. This one was a bit easier, um, but yeah, I'm gonna share all of this stuff on, on GitHub so you can have a look at the smart contracts. And it's definitely a good bit of practice, especially if you're a bit new to Solidity, you're coming over from the SDKs, uh, but always happy to help out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs, like it, share it, subscribe to us, give me any feedback in the comments and uh, also reach out to me with any questions. You can find my socials uh, online as well. Take care everyone, thanks a lot for watching.